thank both the gentlemen. We now recognize the gentleman from Pennsylvania, Mr. Cartwright, for the opening statement. Uh, thank you, Chairman Issa and Ranking Member Cummings. Um, the, uh, the implementation of recommendations from our Inspectors General can serve to decrease waste and ensure that the Federal Government is spending the taxpayers' money as efficiently as possible. Uh, I want to welcome our witnesses here today and uh, tell you I look forward to hearing about the work of the IGs today and working with my colleagues to maximize the efficiency of government, uh, an endeavor which is increasingly important during these difficult economic times. For example, bridge safety uh, is particularly important in my district. I represent the 17th Congressional District of Pennsylvania, including Lackawanna County, Pennsylvania. In Lackawanna County, Pennsylvania alone, we have 66 bridges that have been graded as structurally deficient uh, or have deterioration to uh, one or more of their major components uh, and another four bridges that are closed entirely. Uh, that is more than 10 percent of the total bridges, bridge closures in uh, the State of Pennsylvania. Uh, it represents more than an inconvenience. Uh, it is a danger uh, and a looming expense uh, that will be difficult to pay. Uh, it is the type of issue we need to head off before it gets to this point. Uh, and I believe uh, the recommendations of the IG can help. Unfortunately, implementation of these recommendations is going to be all the more difficult because the testimony from the Inspectors General Tighe and Scoville come in the midst of yet another manufactured fiscal crisis. Republican leadership's refusal to negotiate in good faith with President Obama has forced our nation into this, this sequestration, costing vital programs the money needed to operate. The cuts to the Department of Education and Transportation, each measure about $2 billion. The Department of Education will see devastating decreases in areas including special education programs, disability services, and higher education. Transportation cuts will slash the budget of the key safety agencies such as the Federal Aviation Administration. Moreover, the CR put forth by the Republican leadership this week would further slash funding to areas such as highway safety to below the levels agreed upon just last year in MAP 21, the Comprehensive Surface Transportation Bill. The CR also fails to account for the new structures put in place by MAP 21, thus allocating money to accounts that no longer exist in law while not funding new vital programs. These are real problems with relatively simple fixes that Congress should be solving instead of creating new issues for these departments. Additionally, the very IG offices that make these recommendations will be cut by the sequester. Inspector General Tighe's office will be reduced by $3 million, and Inspector General Scoville's office will lose $4 million. If we are to emphasize the role played by these offices, it makes no sense to allow this sequester to cut back on their future work. The negative impacts of sequester cuts are simply more proof that blindly hacking at the budget is not an effective path towards fiscal responsibility. If we are to make progress in reducing waste and maximizing services, we can't allow the sequester to continue. We can begin by following a common sense approach like the ones proposed by Representative Chris Van Hollen and House Democrats or the White House, which replaces the sequester by closing loopholes for oil and gas companies, ensuring the wealthy don't use tax breaks to pay less than their fair share, uh, and things like refocusing our farm subsidies. We cannot do this alone. I urge Republican leadership to come to the table in order to seriously and responsibly seek a balanced approach that will put our nation on a path towards fiscal responsibility without jeopardizing our services or our national economic recovery. And with that, I yield back. Thank you. Gentlemen.